Legion. Uh, our slogan is American Gold, uh, but it probably should be probably should be Nevada Gold. Um, as you can see from the slide, 11 of our 14 projects are located in Nevada. Um, six of our uh, projects are being drilled in the next 10 to 12 months. Uh, all of our projects are drill ready. And what I mean by drill ready is the geochem, the geophysics, all the early work has been done. All the targets have been delineated. Bonds have been placed on um, about half the projects. They're ready to drill. And we're going to drill about um, six of those projects in the next 10 to 12 months. And Gold Corp is funding that program. Uh, they recently took an interest in us in a private placement and came in for just under 10% of the company. So we, we, refer that to, we refer to that as discovery drilling. And that's uh, 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 moving forward in parallel with uh, our flagship property called the Eastside Gold Project, which uh, presently sits at about one and a half million ounces and is open in every direction um, and is going to get larger with additional work. Uh, we have a strong board and mine finding management team. Uh, Russell Ball was recently the CFO of Gold Corp. Prior to that, he was 19 years with Newmont and he was a CFO of Newmont. Norm Pitcher was past president of El Dorado, but I, I think our claim to fame is Andy Wallace. Uh, Andy is credited with five gold discoveries uh, in Nevada. Um, uh, he's recognized by industry as one of the most successful prospectors in the gold business. And when geologists talk about their discoveries, you have to ask them, well, did any of them ever produce? Well, all of Andy's discoveries are uh, past and current producing gold mines. What I find most interesting about this slide is, is not Andy's amazing track record. Uh, it's um, under the column that says current owner. So Andy found all of these um, and they all went to senior mining companies and over the years they got recycled. And you probably notice every time there's a new gold cycle, it's the same projects just coming back. It's the same projects being recycled with new ownership. And that's the case here at Pinson D, Florida Canyon and Marigold. Those are all Andy Wallace discoveries and Andy works exclusively for Allegiant. I don't think Nevada needs any introduction. If you're in the gold business, you want to be in Nevada. Uh, it's simply just the best jurisdiction in the world for, for the gold mining uh, industry. Uh, of the six projects that we're drilling over the next 10 to 12 months, I've listed them here in order. Five are in Nevada, one uh, is in Utah, just, on the, just over the border in Utah, um, over the Nevada border. It's a fairly aggressive drill program. I'm not aware of any juniors testing this many high quality targets, uh, particularly targets identified by an individual who um, has a long track record of discovery, specifically in Nevada. So this project, this drilling campaign is underway. Uh, we completed uh, drilling at Red Hills um, in September. Uh, we're expecting to announce results this month. We recently just finished drilling at Hughes Canyon, or those assays are slowly trickling in, and we're about to start drilling at North Brown, and Monitor Hills, Adelaria Hill, and Silver Dome, and so on. So we're about three months into the program with about another eight or nine months to go. We can't talk about all our projects in 10 minutes. Um, I'm really gonna focus on the one we believe is the most prospective. It may have uh, the highest probability of discovery. Uh, our North Brown project is located on the Battle Mountain Trend. It's just outside of Eureka. Um, we often hear that you just don't find good grades sticking out of the ground in Nevada anymore. Um, that's not true. Uh, North Brown uh, is a very good example of that. North Brown has samples in float up to nine grams per ton and four grams per ton in outcrop just sticking out of the ground. Uh, it's a prospecting discovery by Andy and his team. There isn't a drill hole in sight and it's right on the Battle Mountain trend. So that drilling is right about to get underway. The next three to get drilled are Monitor Hills, Adelaria Hill, and Silverdome, all highly prospective. But our market cap is, uh, doesn't just reflect discovery drilling, it's 100% easily backed by our flagship property called Eastside. We have a market cap of about $20 million Canadian, which makes us very undervalued just based on the Eastside project. So Eastside is uh, just outside of Tonopah. It's in an area of excellent infrastructure 
The highway that you see there runs right through the property. That's the highway, the main highway from Reno to Las Vegas. The power line uh, is 120,000 volts. It runs right through the claim block. We own 100% of the property. It's district scale, it's very large. Um, uh, it doesn't have any issues with biology, archaeology, or uh, in environmental restrictions. It's all BLM land, it's not on forestry land. The limited metallurgical work that was done to date uh, suggests that the oxide leaches very well. Um, the oxide penetration goes down pretty deep, about 1,000 feet. Eventually, like on all projects, you get into the sulfides at about 1,000 feet. And the metal, the met work on the sulfides suggests that it leaches very well, so it's not refractory. Here we have uh, an image of the claim block. So from north to south, it's about 15 kilometers. So it really, really is district scale. In that red outline, uh, you'll see what we call the original zone. The original zone has a resource of about 1.2 million ounces, open in every direction, with about 720,000 ounces located within the pit. It's not necessarily the best part of the property, it's only where we started working first. So as we were advancing the original zone, we continued to prospect and the claim block just kept getting larger and larger. There are now about a dozen undrilled targets on the property. Way down to the south, we acquired 300,000 ounces uh, in a number of claims off of Seabridge, which gets us our one and a half million ounces in various categories, open in every direction. So it's, it's going to get bigger. Uh, on this slide, uh, we have an outline of the pit, and within the area of the pit in green is the existing 1.2 million ounce resource. Now, the purpose of this slide is to demonstrate how this deposit's gonna get larger with a fair, fairly limited amount of drilling. Um, the area in between the blue line and the green outline is presently classified as waste within uh, the resource. And that's because it has no drilling. It was never drilled at the time of the resource. So uh, the result was uh, 1.2 million ounces with a fairly high strip ratio of about five and a half. Uh, we set out this year to prove that and to demonstrate that the mineralization does continue into those areas currently classified as waste. So we drilled to the west and we drilled to the south, uh, very widely spaced drilling. We only drilled 20 holes and we were successful in demonstrating that there is gold in those areas currently classified as waste. So when you look at the cross sections, uh, on the left is the existing resource um, with a $1,300 pit. And on the right is that particular cross section after we drilled those 20 holes. And you can see that we added a lot of ounces. Uh, so we demonstrated that the, the mineralization does continue west. But what's significant about this, uh, uh, these two images is the outline of the pit that you can see on the right there. The outline of the pit, you can see that there's um, mineralization continuing below the pit. So there's about 500,000 ounces under the pit that's not in the pit. And it's not in the pit because it's too deep. It's not in the pit because if we would have drawn the pit to bring in that half million ounces in the initial, initial resource, the western wall would have been way over to the west. The strip ratio would have been uneconomic uh, and it just wouldn't have worked um, from a modeling standpoint. So with 66 holes, um, we intend to drill uh, the areas to the west, the areas to the south, currently classified as waste. Um, uh, and we believe that that program of $5 million Canadian dollars is going to double the amount of ounces in the pit and significantly reduce the strip ratio. Uh, the next slide is a peer comparison. Uh, it lists companies that are mostly in Nevada with some exceptions, um, but in order to get on this peer comparison, you needed to have a resource uh, or some sort of economic study. And you can clearly see that we're very undervalued relative to our peers at a uh, market cap of 15 million US, about $20 million Canadian. Uh, we presently have uh, about 60 million shares outstanding, and I should mention the stock structure is it's quite good. Uh, we were uh, recently listed. We've only been a publicly traded company for about 10 months. Um, so we have a very reasonable sh share structure. We've only carried out two financings to date, and that includes the IPO. But our market cap at $20 million Canadian and the trading range of 30 cents 
uh, at today's close to 75 cents. Um, Gold Corp, as I mentioned, is now a shareholder. They presently hold about 10% of the company. Columbus Gold is a shareholder. I am Gold and Nord Gold. So we have a, an interesting mix of corporate shareholders. The last thing I'm going to mention is that for a company that's only been around 10 months, we have more newsletter writer coverage than any junior mining company that I'm aware of. We presently have 12 newsletter writers that cover us. Um, you recognize some of the names there. Some of those newsletter writers are, are present here at the conference today, uh, with a notable exception, John. Um, and uh, there should be one or, one or two uh, new newsletter writers uh, on the list in the near future. Thanks for your time.